From the Empire State to the Golden Gates. This is Quad Radio USA. Now, with all the dirt from the world of ATV motocross and GNCC racing, here's Mr. 10 Seconds. Rodney Tomlin. And a good evening, everyone, as we welcome you to Quad Radio Live from the uh, worldwide studios of Quad Radio USA. And tonight, special night as we turn our attention once again back to the uh, grand world of GNCC racing, of course. And uh, what we're going to be talking with is one sneaky snake who is... Uh, Certainly taking his uh, sweet little old time, if you want to say, in uh, getting uh, himself uh, into the uh, groove of things and getting there on the podium. Finally got himself a podium position finish there uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago whenever we made our way to uh, Unadilla Valley Sports Center for the traditional and uh, record-breaking Grand National Cross Country GNCC up there at Unadilla and 1,872 riders for those of you that didn't know. We'll be talking with uh, Jared as well, joined once again by our old good buddy Johnny G. Johnny Gallagher going to be uh, talking with us tonight and want to say thanks again to our friends at uh, Impact Solutions. Uh, again, uh, over there in uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia, if you've not had an opportunity to see those folks at the racetrack, be sure and do so. They uh, park there uh, with the uh, Maxxis truck at the GNCC and at the ATV Motocross if you're there. You can also go on to ImpactSolutionsATV.com for more details and information. And uh, they've got uh, telephone numbers actually on the Facebook page. If you like the Facebook page, Impact Solutions ATV, uh, you'll be able to uh, get in contact with them that way as well. But uh, thanks to those folks for helping make uh, Quad Radio uh, live possible and Quad Radio uh, still on the air. Also want to say thanks to SSI Decals for their contribution to Quad Radio and helping spread the love with the uh, uh, speaker or speakers, uh, the stickers and uh, soon to come uh, decals and things like that. They also helped design the uh, logo for ATV uh, or G Quad Radio. G whiz, man. I am uh, trying to push too many different buttons here tonight. But anyway, as uh, we say thanks to all those folks, we say thanks to uh, our good buddies joining us on the uh, telephone right now, and that is uh, one Johnny Gallagher and Jared McClure. Welcome, guys. Oh, thanks, thanks for having us on, Ronnie. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Yeah, I know. Here, <laughs> great, great. And uh, can you guys hear me all right tonight? Yep. Okay. We're good. Good. So uh, here we are, man. I mean, uh, historical uh, big weekend uh, just wrapping up there a couple weeks ago as far as uh, GNCC racing is concerned. And, uh, Jared, we'll get with you in here in just a couple moments. But uh, before we, we do that, okay. I want to uh, chit-chat there just a little bit with uh, Johnny about uh, uh, the uh, historical values and the amazing things that took place there just a couple of weeks ago at uh, Unadilla Valley Sports Center. I don't know if you stuck around for the whole weekend or not, Johnny, but I'm sure you heard – the reports of uh, record-breaking turnout for uh, GNCC at Unadilla and in the history of GNCC. I think it was 1,872, if memory serves me correct. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty staggering number. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing this a long time. Um, first GNCC year, uh, what is now a GNCC race that I attended would have been somewhere in the 1983-ish range. Um, one of the probably the spring or the fall uh, fireball at Trenum. I uh, wasn't racing back then, but my dad was, and uh, I was this little little pit guy that you know five years old. So um, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to probably ask Rita, and she might know off the top of her head what kind of numbers those were. But uh, it was it was in the low few hundreds at the most. So you know to push nineteen hundred. I mean we're we're knocking right the, down the door there in two thousand. Um, I mean, that's just exponential growth and really says a lot about uh, Racer Productions as a, as a company and the GNCC Racing Series and all the people that are behind it, um, especially in lean times like this. You know, you hear across the board, people saying, oh, the economy, the economy is bad. We, 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 can't sell, we can't sell vehicles. We can't sell homes. You know, we can't open new stores. But somehow, you know, GNCC Racing is alive and thriving. And, uh, it's a big it is. And a hats off to Wynoa as well, the Western New York Off-Road Association. Just wow. I mean, those guys came out in yeah. droves. 
and uh, it was uh, pretty staggering. I mean, we had really good ATV numbers. We had really good uh, motorcycle numbers. I mean, everything contributed over the course of the weekend for that one. And, you know, uh, just uh, I know uh, we learned a lot. Uh, they have a new system this year at GNCC, from what I understand, and uh, it, it's going to be pretty exciting to uh, see uh, what's taking place there. But the racing man, uh, Chris Borch, wrapped up his fourth and a uh, very historical uh, title. And if, if I'm counting them right, that's 58, which puts him now just 10 away from uh, Bill Balance and, and the great – Barry Hawk now, if you heard last week's big news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard about it. That was, uh, that was definitely uh, definitely cool to, to find out that, um, you know, certainly two of, of the greatest, if not the two greatest, uh, you know, GNCC athletes of all time. Uh, it's just kind of fitting that they're uh, tied atop the leaderboard, you know, because I think there's, uh, if you ever go on the floor, there's obviously a whole lot of debate about, you know, um, Barry versus Bill, Bill versus Barry, and people starting to throw Chris in there now, and um, you know, certainly very well-rounded with the with the bike championship as well as ATV. I mean, that's something I don't. I, I could confidently say you'll probably never see again. Um, but uh, you know, to see that and and find out that there was a lost win in there that nobody nobody counted, and uh, you know, it's a pretty cool thing for GNCC and, and race <laughs> production to go through and do that. Uh, come up with the event tab, you know, for wins by event. Um, you know, wins by brand. I mean, that's a lot of work for them, but it, it's really stepping up the. Uh, you know, the game for, for the people, the fans out there that, that want us to just know who has won and how many wins they have. And uh, for those two titans of the sport to be uh, tied atop the leaderboard is, is definitely pretty fitting. So, and I know <laughs> I, I've actually spent the last five weeks, I believe, now at uh, at the Borch compound, and I know he's, he's chomping at the bit to try and work himself up in there, <laughs> you know, and, and, and be a part of that discussion. So Yeah, yeah, uh, so... I, uh... We're like ten away from uh, that with uh, with his win right now, with his last win. From what I under, from what I, if I'm counting them right, that was win fifty eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yeah, and that's uh, you know that in and of itself is, is an accomplishment. But for the at least for the next ten ten wins or ten races, or you know, I don't think he plans to win them all in a row. But uh, at least for now, it's Bill and Barry up there all by themselves, and uh, and that's awesome to see. I know those two guys; they fought each other hard back in the day and and uh now for them to be sitting both in their post-racing years at, at top of the leaderboard is, is a pretty cool thing I, i'm just waiting to see which one of them's going to pull the trigger first and and come out and, and try and you know pad their tally a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be pretty cool to see a showdown but anyway uh all that aside have you talked to bill balance about this i haven't had a chance to talk with him any i'm just curious uh, what uh, what's coming out of that camp right yeah. now no, I haven't actually. I mean, I talk to Walker pretty regularly, but uh, you know, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to Bill. Uh, he wasn't wasn't at Unadilla, but uh, um, you know, I, I know he has a lot of respect for Barry, and uh, you know, a lot of lot of admiration for Barry's championships. And, and you know, they raced each other really clean and really hard in their day. So I'm sure, uh, sure as much as he enjoyed, uh, you know, being alone atop the leaderboard there for a little bit, or, or at least thought he was. Uh, we all thought he was. Um, I'm sure he. Uh, he can appreciate and respect the fact that, uh, you know, he's tied his bearing. And like yeah. I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two comes out and, and tries to give it another go. I know there's been, been a lot of rumors that uh, Bill's coming back racing next year, so we'll see if, we'll see yeah. if that actually materializes yeah. and, and how it pans out. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and and Bill's still got nine championships over Barry's eight, so he's still got that to rub in his face regardless of what happens. <laughs> and, yeah, we, we, could, we could call that the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, all, 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 that's that's pretty neat, man. I've had a lot of fun with that. And don't be surprised if something else doesn't come up because I'm surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Barry isn't combing through the results with a fine tooth comb right now, looking to see if he can find <laughs> something else. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you know, and there's actually, I mean, there's some. Uh, this is a discussion maybe for another day. I certainly don't want to cut any chairs. Time, uh, you know, he's he certainly worked hard and definitely needs to. Uh, Need his props, but you know there, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions. I not questions, but I, I haven't actually had the opportunity to uh, look exactly how they're tallying those. But you know, if it comes down to it, it, it comes that close. There's some races, um, like obviously uh, we had the, the makeup race at Sparta in '04. Um, you know, and there's been different different situations like that over the years. Um, you know, so I'm just curious to see how that all all tallies in, and 
um, you know, what, what races count, what races don't, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, for right now, it's it's awesome. I think it's very very poetic and uh, very fitting that, like I said, the two two titans of the sport, two biggest names in, in GNCC racing history, um, you know, both are sitting tied atop the leaderboard. So, um, yep. It's, yep. uh, it's it, cool, for sure. It is cool. It, it's been a lot of, you know, if nothing else. I mean, it, it's going to be make for a lot of ribbing between Bill and Barry personally. Even if nothing's ever changed in the history books or anything like that, Bill Barry can always just. <laughs> but, uh, like I say, all that joking aside and everything, we uh, want to say, uh, wow, back to the uh, Unadilla GNCC itself. Pretty amazing uh, race. And uh, the guy that we got with us right now, uh, I think uh, you guys can uh, probably tell the stories about as well as any body and of course that is uh, none other than one number seven and mr sneaky snake himself jared mcclure welcome to quad radio live on a wednesday brother how's things going oh pretty good rodney it's uh been a while since i've been on here good to be back glad you have me i know i know i've been talking to you in a while about getting on here so uh <laughs> you know it's uh Hard to follow up there with a giant G. He's a good talker, you know, but I'll do my best. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll do fine, man. You've got plenty of good uh, good stories to share. How was your uh, Unadilla experience? I know that uh, a podium, your first podium position finish of the season, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, uh, could be the uh, breakout ride you were looking for, I think. Yeah, you know, I've been trying all year to get up there. I uh, fell short a couple times. I had a couple shorts, but, uh, you know, that's the goal, just get up there, get noticed, and... Uh, Unadilla has always been one of my favorite tracks, you know. I mean, 05 there, I, was, I got my first GNCC win up there coming out of the stock class. I think that was actually the first year we were up there, so, uh, you know, that was pretty cool. And I think the numbers up there are always pretty good, you know. We, we always get a lot, of, a lot of riders from New York, and uh, that Wynola series helps out a lot. So, I mean, I wasn't too surprised, you know, seeing the numbers are full. But I think it's, it's awesome, you know, that we come up north for a change, and, you know, that's the only race I jump on 81 and go north. So, I mean, it was cool that we get a lot of riders. And, you know, I mean, I think the thing it says a lot, maybe we should uh, try to have a couple rounds closer to home here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how far how far away was that one for you? That's three hours. It's it's my closest race. So, I mean, it was cool. I uh, had a lot of fans up there. It was cool getting on the podium. And, you know, it was a good deal. Wow, three hours. That's like a drop in the bucket for you then for all the rest of them, huh? <laughs> No doubt. Wow. And you know, I, I, uh, I'm, all for, I'm all for supporting the Wino Series, and I run up there and uh, run quite a few of those, those Jared and uh, Chris and, uh, you know, Jeff and Tracy and a lot of those guys. But, you know, as far as having more races up that way, let's, let's not get carried away. I mean, I, I love the turnout, don't get me wrong, but, you know, from Ohio, that's a haul. From West Virginia, it's a haul. And to all the people down in Kentucky and West Virginia and uh, Virginia and Florida, I mean, that, that, that race is definitely out there. So let's, uh, let's, let's just clear your jets. Maybe we should shoot for a couple in, like, PA before we go back to New York. Because, I mean, let's face it, the Wynoa Series runs PA as well. So maybe, maybe shoot for something more around, like, I don't know, the Bloomsburg area or something what, like that. That's what, 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 about a, what about a little more western PA or western New York? Would, how would that would that be sufficient? Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are, those are even closer as well. I mean, uh, you know, uh, and again, it's not all about proximity. I mean, we do drive to Florida and get a great turnout down there. And uh, by all means, if, if we could have 1,800 at, at every race, um, you know, I, I, I'd certainly drive, make the, you know, seven, eight-hour drive from Ohio for all of them. But uh, that's just that's just a terrible drive. So <laughs> I've actually made it, uh, made it a rule uh, since 07. I don't think I've ever actually driven to Unadilla from home, but maybe one time. It's always been either from Chelsea or from, uh, from Chris's, or I just I kind of worked my way that way just because it's kind of a sucky drive. <laughs> you know, I have to agree with you wholeheartedly, man. I'm not going to lie to you. And I did find a little more scenic way. And, and I dread that drive probably worse than any. And what I like about Florida, obviously, you're going south and it's more tropical and it's a lot warmer and you're leaving the winter and this, that, and the other. But it's about the same amount to Unadilla as it is. Well, actually, it's a little further probably to uh, Florida down to where we're going down to uh, River Ranch and everything. But uh, to New York, say 11, 12 hours in that neighborhood, it drives me crazy to make that drive. But I And I had to make that drive three times this year. I went for ATV motocross, <laughs> and then I got called out for the uh, motocross national. And then, of course, we made the return. But, you know, i got to say, it's it's gotten sweeter every time. It's getting better. Johnny, the more we make that drive, it does get a little better. I hate to admit it. 
especially you know, with I, I, I definitely don't disagree with you. And, and uh, you know, obviously Jared getting on the podium, Jared's a good buddy of mine, and, you know, that was a, a big part of the weekend. I was pretty stoked for him. Uh, you know, I, it's not often that uh, I actually, uh, you know, go up to the podium after the race and usually out of there. And I really needed to get out of there this weekend. You, you know, you asked if I stuck around. A uh, good friend of mine, a guy I raced years ago, uh, Jeff C. got his older brother, got married this weekend. So, uh, Lather Summers from GT Thunder flew me home. Uh, so, I had to get out of there. But uh, as soon as I came across the line, Tracy was standing there with the water. And uh, I said, you know, what was the podium? And, and she said, Jared got third. And I'd hop off my bike and jog over. I didn't, you know, I lived with Chris five months out of the year. Didn't even congratulate him on his winner's championship. Uh, <laughs> you know, Walker's like a little brother to me. I trained with him. I uh, didn't congratulate him on his second. No, not taking anything away from those guys. You know, I, I certainly called him and texted him after the fact and congratulated him, but I made sure I grabbed Jared's calf under the uh, under the backdrop of the thing and said, hey, boy, I'm out of here, but uh, awesome ride. So we're stoked to see him up there. Um, you know, he's one of, definitely one of the good dudes at GNCC racing. I mean, there's a whole lot of good people, but uh, Jared's, Jared's come about it. Uh, he, he, he puts the work in. He does it the right way, and... Uh, to see him up there and, and, you know, battling right there for the win and, and he get on the box. Uh, I'm sure it was a big day for him and, and, uh, you know, it was, it was cool for sure. But, uh, yeah, if, if he wants to go back, I guess since he got on the podium, you know, if he wants to go back up that way, I'll, I'll support it. We can do, we can do two New York rounds or, you know, uh, maybe a one way north eastern Pennsylvania right on the New York border or something like that. But yeah, that, uh, that one I know series is insane. We actually went there and raced last weekend, uh, this past weekend and, uh, Jared couldn't come. He had some issues, but uh, the rest of the crew all went up and, and raced. And um, you know, they, they get those not anywhere near eighteen hundred, but they get some pretty crazy turnouts just for their one oil races as well. So uh, definitely a good group of riders up there. Um, good guys, good people. They're always pumped to have the GNCC people come and show up their races. So um, cool, cool deal for sure. And like I said, was super stoked to see Jared on the podium. For sure, and Jared, yeah, cool. I, I guess you you were you were super stoked too, huh? Oh man, I, I was pumped too. I couldn't, uh, couldn't, I don't know. Just everything came together for once, and uh, you know, I saw Johnny down there. Somebody grabbed my cap. I'm like, yeah, look, look back there. Was. That was pretty cool having Johnny back there. You know, uh, congratulating me. It was just a uh, good time. I'm glad I could do it there in front of all my friends and family. You know, first time this year, and you know, it it just really built my confidence. Like Johnny said. uh, I've been up with Chris a lot riding and putting the time in, and, you know, that's what it takes. You know, you got to gotta stay at it. You know, everybody else is. And uh, I just lately just got a bug up, and, then you know, I've been up there riding. So. Wow. Yeah, so uh, why hadn't it happened before now, man? I mean, come on. I've been calling this. I called it all year <laughs> last year. I know you were on me tough, but uh, I, I don't know what it was. You know, over the summer there, I just uh, – started going up with Chris, you know, I was like, why am I up there, and, you know, my, my mechanic, John, he, he was kind of on me, too, about it, yeah, you need to get up there, you need to get up there, and once I got in the groove and started going up, and, you know, Johnny was up a couple times, so, you know, made a little more fun, you know, he was up there, we always have a good time together, and there's always people up there riding, so, uh, we definitely have a good time and get a good workout in. You know, Rodney, last year, uh, Jared had that podium at the, the kind of unspoken podium or the unknown podium at Steer Creek after everything. So he did grab that one podium in 2011. And, uh, you know, you and I did a lot of talking this winter, obviously, with the preseason hype shows that we did and, and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, obviously you want to hype up your friends and, and, you know, talk good about your buddies. But, you know, I, I know you were sincere, and I was certainly sincere in saying that Jared was going to have a, a breakthrough year. Uh, he was up there a lot at the end of last season, you know, obviously mm -hmm. with the one yeah. podium like we talked about last year, but at the end of the season, you know, we, we go back and we watch some of the videos and kind of forget how the races went, but Jared was always up there uh, mm -hmm. throughout the whole race, and, and then it seemed something would happen on the last lap, and, um, you know, I, I'll definitely give him the opportunity to tell his side of the story, but, you know, just uh, from what I saw the video, and obviously me being out there, I, I didn't get to watch the race, you know, and unfortunately from my seat where I was, it was about 800 minutes back of them wasn't a good day for me personally, but uh, just nonetheless, you know, after the fact, when I saw the videos and heard the stories, it, it sounds to me like uh, Jared, it, at least for that race, he, he got his last lap figured out, got the late, the late race charge figured out, had himself in the right position, and, uh, you know, I think the sneaky snake is, is finally, uh, unfortunately for Jared, and fortunately for the fans of GNCC Racing, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot more... Uh, 
flying below the radar, you know, with what yeah. I've seen out of Jared coming into that event. Um, you know, he was he was locked, packed, and ready to go, and uh, you know, proved that there. And, and I think he's going to come out swinging these last three, which really is not good news for me. Um, <laughs> we, had our, <laughs> we had a little, we had a little, a little. Uh, I guess we call it our inner inner class battle going on. We were. You know, everybody talks about the, the big five, the, the top five, the big dogs. You know, you got uh, obviously Chris and, and Walker and Taylor and Chris Bissell and uh, Adam McGill. You know, those are the big five. Everybody talks about all the time, all the time. And you know, I was I was pretty stoked to be sitting in the sixth spot in points all year, basically. <laughs> and then uh, Jared goes out and clocks off the podium, and I put in a lowly eighth after a piss poor day. Pardon my language. And uh, Jared, Jared smokes by me in the points. I'm like, come on! <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm coming back with a vengeance in Ohio. This is my home track, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not going easy on Sneaky Snake. I'm still keeping the podium, but uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not giving him any, any, any free passes or anything in Ohio. That's for sure. <laughs> wow, man. Uh-oh. He wants He's his number done. back. <laughs> 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 it's actually been an ongoing joke all year. Who's number six between Jared and I? Like every race, we check the points. And it's like, come on, I'm still holding on to number six. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, you... uh, it, it's cool. Yeah, it is. Let's see. I'm checking points here, right here, right now. You dropped all the way back to eighth overall, man. I know, I know. Kevin Yo stuck by me there as well by a couple points. So yeah, he did. I'm, uh, I'm not, not. I got stoked on my day at Unadilla. It was, it was a bad one. It was, uh, I, I had a feeling before the race, uh, and actually, you know, we were talking before about how big this event was, and, you know, there's, a, there's something in the air. Um, I don't know, pulling in there Saturday morning, I was, I was shocked how many people there were. I mean, I drove in from the hotel by myself, really, to, you know, get there for the, for the youth start, and uh, it was just packed. I mean, I'd never seen anything like it. Uh, I think we had 1,600 and something riders there. Uh, pushing 1700 back in 06, 07, something like that. I think that might have been the previous biggest GNCC. Yeah, um, pretty much. And I remember how packed. I remember how packed it was then. And uh, you know, to, to pull in there Saturday morning, it was pretty obvious right away. I texted a few people and was like, "Hey, I think we're setting a record today, folks. This place just pretty much slam packed." So, <laughs> um, but unfortunately for me, that that uh, that's something in the air. And I tweeted that morning, like, ah, "I got a I got a tingle in my belly." You know, something big's going to happen. Really, all that meant was that I was going to not ride well and make bad decisions and miss on my bike setup and, and, and not do well. So that's what the tingle in my belly was. It wasn't anything cool. But, uh, Johnny, uh, no, you, to- you told me on the line that uh, you didn't have a good feeling today. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> you know, I think I did. <laughs> well, I turned <laughs> over. I remember, like, as, like, I don't get nervous before races, and that's, uh, this isn't about me, Joe, this is about you, I mean, was it, did you feel anything different, Eric, I mean, you just, obviously, you know, you, you knew you worked hard, um, you are ready to go, I mean, how did you feel coming into the race, anything, anything feel different, anything feel special, or, or even as the race got going? You know, I definitely, I always feel a little nervous coming off the break, just kind of wondering who's been training harder than who, and kind of. You know, but I felt pretty confident, and I remember sitting on the line. Well, we were actually sitting up with uh, up in the first corner. They're getting ready to call be called down, and uh, I said, I, "I just feel like a little nervous and tired." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, me too." And you know, that's like kind of unusual for me because usually I'm kind of just calm and relaxed. But you know, up there, I kind of just felt a little different. But you know, I felt ready, and uh, I, I said to myself, like, uh, I was just going to go out there and like try to be smart and not screw it up on the last lap like I've been known to do the past couple of races and you know that's, that's kind of how it played out <laughs> I was just smart you know it's funny I, I actually had forgotten that conversation but I remember now we were sitting on the first train and you said like, man I feel really tired and I'm like yeah me too man I'm ready to go to sleep because <laughs> we you know we had that we had that little pushback we started late and uh you know everybody you're kind of geared up and you don't realize it but um you know right this is something I, I think probably a lot of people don't realize but you know you, you you kind of mentally prepare yourself, even if you don't realize you're doing it, um, you know, for that time of day, and, you know, you're ready to go, and, and your mind's kind of set on, okay, 1 o'clock, it's all going to be a go, even though you maybe consciously never think it. And then when they push you back an hour, like, you kind of feel like, and it was awesome that they did, because it was kind of a huge turnout, and, mm-hmm. and I'm certain that uh, it was all for the best, but, 
you know, it's like we felt like we were probably supposed to be in the middle of our race, and, and our adrenaline hadn't started pumping yet, so we were starting to crash already. You know, <laughs> and we were just kind of there yawning, like, oh, well, we're supposed to be like, you know, getting fuel right now, not sitting on the starting line. So, um, yeah, I, I do remember that though, Jared. I remember you saying you get a little bit, and I said, yeah, man, I'm really nervous too. And it, it turned out you were nervous because you were about to have a breakthrough ride, and I was nervous because I was about to have to contemplate retirement if I keep riding like that. <laughs> Well, Jared, tell us tell us about your day, man. Take us through it. Oh, uh, Ronnie, I got a pretty decent start. You know, we got those on the fire pretty good. Seen some pictures there. It was pretty much a on the hole shot. <laughs> <laughs> Not to bust on Johnny there, but uh, <laughs> we uh, I went and was about a third behind Wolf and McGill, and Wolf was out front. I mean, he was he was rolling. I was kind of thinking to myself, man, I hope. Hope this don't keep up all race, or I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was a little nervous, but uh, you know, I think he kind of slowed down a little there and kind of fell on the pace, and we all kind of were just rolling. And I know the big question of the day was who was hitting the jump or not, sky shot jump. So uh, we hit the motor track, still running third behind them guys, and I seen Wolf hit it, McGill hit it, so I just kind of stayed on it and hit it. And you know, once once that was over, that was kind of the big stress factor of the day, whether or not we were going to be jumping that thing. And, uh, you know, I just kind of rode, rode with them, too. And I guess Wolf kind of seemed like he got a little tired there at first. Maybe he was pushing a little hard. But, uh, you know, I got by him and kind of was behind McGill for the first lap or two of the race. And I kept seeing Boris inching closer and inching closer. And uh, as it went on, I, I, I'm i sure Johnny will agree, lappers up there with the short track, you know, they became an issue. So uh, me and McGill got behind a couple of lappers there and Porch closed in on us and, he was putting some pressure on there early on, and, you know, but for the most part, it was us three, and Walker was back there, and, you know, we were kind of just having fun all day, changing position, and uh, towards the end, that Walker cut up, and, you know, I think, actually, when we pit it, he got out front, Walker opted not to pit, he got the lead, and, uh, you know, we all stayed pretty much close, but like I said, Lappers, I know they gave me some problems, I kind of dropped back off the guys and had to play catch-up, but, uh, you know, caught them guys, and the four of us were just rolling. I think you could see in the video. But actually, when McGill broke, we were all kind of rolling together. And, you know, once he broke, it kind of guaranteed me a podium as long as I wouldn't do anything stupid. So uh, <laughs> I was just kind of playing it smart. And, you know, everybody was telling me, use your head, use your head, you know. So I just kind of what I did. And, you know, I was super pumped to be on the podium. And, you know, it was just a good, good day. Well, that's great, man. I'm glad to hear that. That's, uh, that seems like... Uh I know, you know, the the perfect place to do it, and hopefully, you know, that right there, like we said, gives you the confidence that uh, is going to take you through the next three rounds and keep you right there in contention. Yeah, you know, it's definitely a huge confidence boost. Um, the bike worked awesome. You know, I did some some testing over the summer, not a lot, but changed a few small things, you know, it paid off. I mean, it's always good when you're out there and you're, you're just riding, having fun, not thinking about what's wrong with your bike, why this is doing that, why this feels stiff, or, you know what I mean? I just, that's kind of the, the, what was going through my head, you know. I just felt comfortable with having fun. Fans were cheering, you know. It was, it was a good day, and the bike worked awesome. That's great. Well, man, I, guys, I know normally I like to go for at least an hour, but there is a major storm. My wife is out there going, you better get off there. You better get off there. Well, I, <laughs> the way that I do Internet and stuff. She uh, uh, she knows that if I take a lightning strike, I'm going to lose about 800 bucks like right off the bat. So <laughs> I'm going to have to end up getting <laughs> getting off the internet and uh, uh, shutting this bad boy down tonight. But uh, Jared, you know we hope to have you on again real soon. And maybe if this thing busts through pretty quick, maybe we can uh, resume and people can catch it on a replay later or something like that. Because we got some. Uh, uh, you know, some pretty good stuff to talk about, I'm sure, and uh, we're just now starting to scratch the surface. But anybody you want to send a quick shout-out to before we let you go this evening? Uh, yeah, definitely, Ron. You know, well, thank you for having me on here. You know, I said any time you want to want to do something, just let me know. I know we talked before, but uh, I definitely want to thank uh, John Bowers, Bowers Motorcycle. You know, he's, he's my main guy, my mechanic. He supports my whole program, so... I uh, definitely want to thank him, you know, William Yopi, too. He's been a huge part of my program the past couple of years um, with Yopi Racing, and, you know, he does all the side-by-side -side stuff, but he still devotes a part of his program to me, which is awesome. 
Also, uh, Coastal Racing, Scott Tiger. He's a uh, he's pretty huge part of my program. Uh, Exit Shocks, ExitBob.com, Roll Design, IMS Roll, Moto Pro Training, Precision, uh, Moose Racing, DP Brakes, uh, Tire Balls, Power Mad, Roll Design, DWT, Kenda. I mean, there's there's a whole list, you know. And to name them all, we'd be here all night. <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, it's just uh, awesome you let me on here, and I'm, I'm glad to be back. So uh, whenever you want to do something, just let me know. Hey, man, it might even come up tonight, depending on how bad this storm is, but it, it is starting to thunder pretty bad outside. And like I said, I've got a lot of money invested in a system that puts me on the Internet right now. So uh, we will cut her short tonight. But, uh, man, thanks. Congratulations. I look forward to seeing you up there more. Johnny, thanks again for uh, all your help tonight, man. It's uh, been uh, wonderful uh, talking and chatting with you as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Uh, if I could throw one last thing out there, uh, Jared, I obviously worked hard to get to where you are, get that podium. Um, you know, how much, uh, how much does that change your outlook going into these next three? And being honest, don't give me the politically correct answer. And make, it, make it quick so we don't run around these equipment. Are you, <laughs> I mean, are you hell bent, hell, hell bent on podiums at this point? Let's, let's tell the truth. I, I want to stay up there, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm really confident. You know, there's about, three other guys I'm worried about and I think everybody knows who they are and you know I, I feel confident and I think I can pull another one off cool well, well uh, with that I'll, I'll let you guys go thanks for having me on always, uh, always happy to help out alright Johnny thank you Thank you, Jared, and hey, also want to say thanks to thanks, our good friends over at uh, Impact Solutions, located there at uh, 985 Harris Highway in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Uh, you can find them on the Internet uh, on Facebook at uh, Impact Solutions. You can also find them on the Internet at ImpactSolutionsATV.com. Uh, and uh, you can also call them up, 304-863-0025, and uh, find out more. They are your authorized, your factory-authorized U.S. Uh, representative for ELCA suspension, and uh, if you're dealing with ELCA, you're dealing with uh, Impact Solutions here in the U.S. So uh, be sure and call them up, get a contact with them, and uh, tell them we said thanks. Thanks to all you folks for listening in. We have the uh, Quad Radio live replay coming up here in just a couple moments if you're just tuning in. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed tonight's show, and hopefully we'll get uh, the Sneaky Snake back on very soon. For Johnny Gallagher, Jared McClure, I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Quad Radio. Live.